central retinal artery occlusion is an ocular emergency resulting in profound monocular vision loss and is the ocular analog of a cerebral stroke. It is usually caused by an embolus leading to significant reduction in retinal perfusion. Lack of evidence-based practice guidelines has resulted in several treatment options, both medical and surgical. Studies have ever shown that these therapies do not give significant amelioration in most cases. Given the limitations of medical therapies, vitrectomy promises to be a potential treatment option for this condition. Here we present a normal surgical technique using a combination of low IOP vitrectomy, disc dissection and arterial massage which helps in dislodging the embolus causing the CRAO. The first step is to perform a low IOP vitrectomy. This offers the same advantage as paracentesis and other IOP lowering methods would offer. It reduces the resistance offered by the intraocular pressure to the ocular perfusion from the central retinal artery. Also, the prolonged low IOP facilitates the movement of the embolus in the central retinal artery towards the retina. Disc dissection is basically a de-roofing of the disc by dissecting the central disc meniscus. This decompresses the retinal vessels as they emerge from the lamina cribrosa. It also helps to further reduce the resistance to the flow across the central retinal artery. It also helps the embolus to migrate towards the lamina cribrosa of the optic disc. The central retinal artery was then massaged from center to periphery in a radial fashion along with an arterial sheathotomy. This helps in dislodging the causative embolus from the central retinal artery. This has to be done very slowly as it helps the embolus move from the lamina or the prelaminar area towards the retinal circulation. The triad of these maneuvers helps in dislodging the embolus. Let us see a few of such cases. In this 32-year-old gentleman with central retinal artery occlusion, the conventional treatment had failed. After performing the vitrectomy, one can see a part of the embolus being dislodged to the periphery. As the central retinal artery starts pulsating at the lamina, the rest of the embolus can be easily located and massaged out to the periphery. He did very well to regain 20 by 200 vision. The next patient had a central retinal artery occlusion after a mitral valve surgery. This was a challenge as the embolus was large and had to be literally milked to the periphery. Again, once the central retinal artery starts pulsating at the laminar area, the rest of the embolus is easily dislodged. This patient did very well and went on to regain 20 by 120 vision on the first post-operative day. The migration of the embolus is dependent on the mean arterial pressure. In patients with a low mean arterial pressure, the embolus shows a slow migration. However, in many cases, it moves through the retinal circulation very rapidly. Like this eye with a CRAO, once the vitrectomy and disc massage was done, the central retinal artery can be seen pulsating to life instantaneously. This procedure also helps in branch retinal artery occlusion. Here, we can see the thrombus being dislodged in an eye with progressive visual loss following a branch retinal artery occlusion. He went on to recover 20 by 20 vision by the fifth post-operative day. Encouraged by the results, we have done this procedure in 18 eyes with central retinal artery occlusion 
and have got very positive results. The most gratifying result was in this 40-year-old cardiac anesthesiologist who presented with a vision of only perception of light. She was operated within three hours of the onset of CRAO and she went ahead to recover 20 by 20 vision. We feel that if the embolus is around the area where the central retinal artery pierces the dura, this surgery is not likely to be successful. Dislodging a deeply located embolus is particularly difficult and represents a limitation of this procedure. However, if the occlusion is at the lamina, the surgery stands a good chance of success. Unfortunately, the paucity of these cases and the urgency to treat them makes a planned study impossible.